that serious reasons to believe that His Excellency Rigathi Gashagua. The ground is about serious reasons to believe. So you all, all you need is to believe. All you need is to believe that he has committed crimes. All you need in law is to believe that Rigathi Gashagua has committed crimes. That is the threshold. If in your mind you believe that Rigathi Gashagua, by the narration that I'm going to give, has committed crimes, then you vote in the affirmative. Yes. Serious reasons to believe that Rigathi Gashagua has committed crimes under sections 45, 1A46 of the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act and sections 2, 3, 4, 7 of the Process of Crime and Money Laundering Act. And Mr. Speaker, our allegation here is that the Deputy President in the last two years has amassed wealth that during the short period that I was able to do research totals to about 5.2 billion, which is inconsistent with his known sources of income and with his last declaration of income. Mr. Speaker, it will be remembered that during the presidential debate, the Deputy President did declare that he was worth 800 million. It is also known by virtue of the gazettements by the Salaries and Remuneration Commission that he earns a million or thereabout per month, and therefore he needs to show where he got the money to amass these properties. The import of my allegation is twofold. Number one, there is what we call unexplained assets under the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act. And number two, there is money laundering. Mr. Speaker, in my motion, I have listed a total of 22 companies, 22 companies that I believe the Deputy President has been using, number one, to amass, to award himself through conflict of interest, businesses in his office and in government. And number two, to purchase properties using unexplained sources of income. Mr. Speaker, it will be remembered that yesterday during the televised interview, the Deputy President went through all the companies and they did not deny that either of them belongs to him. All he did was to say that he registered some of them before he became Deputy President. I am not interested in the time that the companies were, were, were registered. I am interested in what the companies have done in the last two years. And I will demonstrate that, some of, that these companies have actually done economic crimes against the people of Kenya. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I have also listed properties. I have listed a number of properties that the Deputy President has purchased within the two years that he has been in office. I have listed Treetops Hotel in Inyeri. I have listed Olive Gardens Hotel. I have listed Queensgate Service Apartments. I have listed Wamunyoro Investments Land in Mbakasi. I have listed the Abadea Treetops Hotel, Outspan Hotel, Olive Gardens Hotel, and the Pingo Beach Resort. Mr. Speaker, you will be told by the defense that some of the properties that I've listed do not belong to Rigadi Gashagwa, but they belong to the estate of Nderitu Gashagwa. Mr. Speaker, as you listen, please know that this man is not fond of telling the truth. And I will prove to you, I will prove to you, and I want you to listen to me very carefully. That Mr. Rigadi Gashagwa, it is true that he was one of the administrators of the estate of his late brother. It is easy to hide under the dead because the dead cannot come to give evidence. But also, there are documents. I have with me the joint will executor's report on the status of the estate of, Rigadi, of, of, of Niritu Gashagwa as at 27th June 2024. This is a valid document that is part of our bundle of documents and that also I have seen is part of the documents that came through public participation. And in this document, what the Deputy President has not told Kenyans, and listen to me, because the Deputy President actually committed another crime yesterday, 
misleading Kenyans. What the deputy president has not told Kenyans is that in those two years, he is the one who has bought the properties of his own brother through coercion. And I am not interested, I have no problem with people owning property. What I have a problem with, and this is what he needs to be explaining to us, where did you get the money to buy these properties? This is, a, this is the big question. This is the big question. Mr. Speaker, you will be told that uh, when I became deputy president, I transferred my companies to my two sons. And my two sons are the best entrepreneurs that Kenya has ever produced. They are the best investors that Kenya has ever produced. And they, one day they walked into a bank and they got a loan of 600 million. Mr. Speaker, I have looked at the ID numbers of the two sons. And I can confirm that they are in their early 30s. I want Kenyans, Gen Zs, you were in the streets. I want Kenyans to tell me which Kenyan, 23 years old, can walk into a bank. Where do you get the security to secure a 600 million loan? I started by saying all you need to do is to believe that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa has committed crimes. And, the re and, and buying, if buying properties worth 5.2 billion within a period of two years is not reason enough to believe that he has stolen from the Kenyan Republic, what else then will be a reason to, to believe? If a 28 year old can be alleged to have walked into a bank and gotten a loan of 600 million, what else is a serious reason to believe that an economic crime has been done? Mr. Speaker, at page Just uh, shortly, Mr. Speaker, I have, I have therefore proven that the Deputy President indeed is the one who bought, through coercion, the estate of his late brother. The source of funds to buy the estate is not known. Also in my bundle of documents, Mr. Speaker, there is a company called Cristo, and this is a very interesting company. This company called Cristo is the one that bought Abadea Safari Hotel. And I have exhibited at page 122 of my bundle of documents a transfer document transferring the ownership of Abadea Safari Hotel from the original owners to the children of, Ms. of the Deputy President Rigadi Gashiagwa at a consideration of 535 million. And this transfer, Mr. Speaker, was done on the 22nd November 2023, immediately after the Deputy President assuming office and telling Kenyans that he found empty coffers. He was able, within two months, to buy a property worth 535 million in Nyeri. Which empty coffers did he find? The other day, I have, I have, I have, I have exhibited at page 118 the CR12 of the new company which shows that his two sons are the directors. I have also exhibited the transfer document to show that actually the ownership of the company did shift at, an, at, a, at a cost of 535 million. <laughs> and therefore, I believe I have discharged my burden of proof to the required standard. Mr. Speaker, yesterday, the Deputy President said he immediately became Deputy President, he asked his children not to do business with government. But you will realize, because he's speaking from both sides of his mind, mind, of mouth, you will realize that even in this transaction about hotels, Tree Tops belongs to Kenya Wildlife Service. Yes, it is true, he has leased. But if you say that you, do, you have instructed your children not to transact with government, and then you lease an hotel owned by the government. Are you not transacting with government? Are you not transacting with government? And therefore, the live interview by the deputy president yesterday is a further ground for the deputy president to be impeached. I can go on and on and on to show that the deputy president did purchase Kuruwitu Home Resort at a cost of 250 million from the estate of his own brother. Mr. Speaker, you were told also that Vipingo Ridge, Vipingo Ridge Hotel 
is, uh, is a property within the estate of the late brother to the deputy president. But I have exhibited in my bundle of documents, CR12. CR12 is a document that shows the company directors, showing the children of the deputy president as directors of Vipingo, Vipingo hotels. The children of the deputy president are not listed in the will as executors of his estate. So one would wonder, because they are not listed as executors of the estate of the Ritu Gashagwa, then where do they come in, in terms of owning the Vipingo company? It can only be by way of purchase, it can only be by way of money laundering. Mr. Speaker, one other reason why I have provided the 20 something companies and the properties is also to demonstrate character. Some of these companies have not transacted. In, it is my prosecution theory that these are special purpose vehicles for purposes of money laundering and for purposes of preparation for money laundering. And therefore, one would wonder why the deputy president would have so many companies that are not active, except for the reason of waiting for a prime day for them to launder resources from government. Mr. Speaker, I have also listed many, many companies and suspicious transactions where companies were being paid as much as 100 million from the office of the deputy president. They are paid in the morning, and at noon, they are withdrawing the money in cash. You are aware that under our regulations, you cannot withdraw more than a million shillings from the bank. But I have listed in schedules where in a single day, as many as 10 transactions, cash transactions, were being done from monies that had been paid from the office of the deputy president. These are serious reasons to believe that the monies were being withdrawn for suspicious reasons. And for that reason, Mr. Speaker, I believe I have discharged I have discharged my burden of proof, and this ground is proven beyond the required threshold, and it should be confirmed as a ground of impeachment. Mr. Speaker, allow me to proceed to ground number eight. Ground number eight is about breach of section 132 of the Penal Code and breach of section 129 of the Leadership and Integrity Act. Basically, 